There are a lot of new big threes in the NBA now, and I'm ranking the top 10. At number 10 is a new big three. It's the New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson was an MVP candidate last year. All NBA player. I mean, he's the real deal. There's no reason we should have doubted him when the Knicks signed him from the Mavericks. And the second option, Julius Randle. He was good until he got injured, and he really could have helped them in the playoffs. And the Knicks would have been the Pacers if he was healthy. And their new addition looked like an all-star when he first got traded. Mikhail Bridges. Yeah, last season wasn't as great as the season before that but he's gonna fit perfectly on this team they get an added bonus because it's a guard wing big trio at number nine is the Denver Nuggets yeah you might think this is too low but like who is their third star is it Aaron Gordon is it Michael Porter Jr I've always been a Michael Porter Jr guy and believe that he's the guy who's their third star but everyone else says it's Aaron Gordon so I'm including Aaron Gordon in here Jokic reigning MVP we know what he's capable of Jamal Murray we know what he can do in the playoffs this playoffs maybe he wasn't as good as the ones before that but I mean the Timberwolves have a good defense so can you blame him and that's why the Nuggets are only at number nine at number eight is the team who beat the Nuggets in the playoffs it's the Minnesota Timberwolves Anthony Edwards is a top 10 player in the NBA borderline while Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert are each good respectively in offense Towns and defense Gobert and Gobert actually has the best true shooting percentage of any player all time still I think so like are we really going to give him that much hate for his offense for being an offensive liability like he's not that bad guys <laughs> y'all can chill with all that at number seven is another new big three it's De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, and DeMar DeRozan yeah Fox and Sabonis have been killing in Sacramento as a dynamic duo sure they got eliminated in the plan but I mean what do you want from them what more can they do they have a real third star now which they haven't had before because was Kevin Herter who was injured I believe could he wasn't there for them so like Malik Monk did he even play did he even do anything well you know DeMar DeRozan will do a lot for the Kings he still got some left in the tank he's not washed by any means and he's a good mid-range scorer still he's clutch the clutchness of this trio is insane and I'm looking forward to the Kings season at number six is the reigning Western Conference champions the Dallas Mavericks yeah Luka and Kyrie carried the Mavericks so hard Luka Doncic was phenomenal playing doing injury every single game he was just crazy it's like he, he was just chuck he was shot chucking but it was actually going in they were forcing him to play out of his mind and the Mavericks depended so heavily on him and he actually came through but of course they couldn't win the championship but now they add Clay Thompson someone who has four rings <laughs> lots of championship experience there and Clay Thompson is very much a winner in his career obviously because you know he's got four rings one of the best shooters of all time is he washed he's getting there I do believe that he's you know, doing good by trying to to expand his game ever since he came back he's been driving more we see him actually dribble the ball and not just being a catch and shoot player like he typically was before the injury when Katie was on the team of course so Clay Thompson has been doing more and I think he's gonna be if he can go back to just doing what he's good at catch and shoot being a shooter then yeah the Mavericks big three is a great big three now getting into the top five we have the Phoenix Suns the question mark here is Bradley Beal of course last season wasn't quite as good as his season before that he wasn't looking like the no trade clause contract player that he is but Devin Booker and Kevin Durant were insane last year just look at their numbers Kevin Durant scoring like 28 points a game Devin Booker still being an all-around guard much better defender than people give him credit for Durant being a much better defender than people give him credit for always using that length same as Booker they're both pretty tall for their positions Booker playing point guard last year is he a traditional point guard I think he's all right at the point guard spot no so everyone's gonna say he's a two that he's just a scorer that he doesn't play defense whatever yeah 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 Devin Booker did his job last year it was a little bit different it's a new coach so that's what you would have expected and the Suns say it was a disappointment getting swept but you can't deny that this big three is good moving on to number four it's Giannis Dame and Chris Milton oh but there were a first round exit just like the Suns why do you have so many first round exits up here listen Anitokounmpo was hurt Damian Lillard was playing through an injury Chris Milton was playing through an injury like this team healthy is championship material but it's just so unfortunate that Giannis got hurt for a second year in a row and they would have destroyed teams and I, I hate you no know, talking 
talking like that. That's these what if scenarios. That's what most NBA fans do. And I try to stay away from that. But I'm just ranking the best big threes. So I have to say the Bucks are this good. Giannis every year is an MVP caliber player. Damian Lillard. I don't know why people are saying he's washed. He's still averaged like 24 points a game. Something like that last year. He He's won the Bucks a lot of games. You look at their record and yeah, they were one of the better teams for a reason. And then Chris Milton, he won the Bucks a game and he prevented them from getting swept in the playoffs this year. He's still good. I don't know why people are saying he's washed too. But moving on into the top three. Another first round exit. It's the LA Lakers. LeBron James and AD, one of the best duos in the league. If you want to see me rank duos, I can do that in a few weeks from now. But they are up here along with Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, whoever you want to put there. I think that the Lakers duo of James and Davis is enough to keep them this high. Obviously, LeBron and AD, they have chemistry, right? They've played together for years. They won a championship together in 2020. They won the in-season tournament together last year and they are just they complement each other so well one thing that was interesting though about you know, this past season was that there were times where neither James or Davis would be on the court in games in which they played and Austin Reeves would kind of be that guy so he's kind of inserted himself into that big three that the Lakers have because the season before Darvin Ham would have always have either James or Davis at least one of them on the court so him trusting Austin Reeves to be that guy it's a good sign for the Lakers so at number two this may be a surprise it's the reigning champion the Boston Celtics Jason Tatum Jalen Brown Drew Holiday yeah I was thinking Derek White do we put him there because he's you know he defines what a Celtic player is but Drew Holiday is just so underrated he's a good scorer I don't know why people are saying that he's just a defensive player he may he's scored the most points in for the Celtics in game one of the finals this year and not only that you know because everyone else was distracting him so Holiday didn't get that much attention but Holiday he has a bag that he can go to you can watch the Team USA training videos he's got a bag he's a good defender and Tatum and Brown are obviously one of the best duos in the league Jalen Brown winning finals MVP but Tatum very much could have won it also he was electric this finals even though some of you won't say that but wait this is number two number two is the reigning champions if the number two are the reigning champions then who could be number one well it's the new trio of the Philadelphia 76 Joel Embiid Tyrese Maxey and Paul George I've said before that Paul George the one of the best two-way players because he still very much got handles he still very much can score and he still very much plays defense and then Tyrese Maxey winning most improved player he's taking it to the next level he can be an all NBA player this year for no no he really can he can be as good as Kyrie Irving really Joel Embiid is the best player in the league he's the most talented and the most skilled player I don't think that's a debate really because he's just so good and of course injuries prevented him from getting past the New York Knicks yes while it's based on who's the best big threes are right now that's what this list is based off of last season's success isn't going to necessarily translate well into this list i know when you're looking at the end product right here but trust me these are the 10 best big threes it in the criteria includes chemistry it includes how good they are individually if you want to take a look these are how i rated the players i can fix these ratings if you want me to but i believe that it's correct pretty much right here so i'm, I'm taking all feedback and just let me know what you want to see next i'm trying to make more videos this summer peace